Hey, welcome guys. This is Tony Porter, Cards and Dice TV. And um, for a while now, I've been thinking about sharing and kind of uh, demonstrating a resource that I use almost every day um, in, in conversations, in research, um, in just identifying patterns and trends, accuracy. Um, Particularly, I use it in our hobby of tabletop baseball games, and it's called Baseball Reference. And uh, I have this particular page because I do a lot of Seaver replays. Um, and I have this particular page uh, down as one of my favorites. It's bookmarked. But from here, I can get into so many other facets of this amazing resource called Baseball Reference Online. Um, man, don't I, don't we all wish we had this back in the seventies? It was so hard to access, you know, lifetime stats and just lots of real detailed information. This is a wealth of information. It's amazing. It can help you doing replays. It can help you just making lineups. It can help you, you know, just, uh, measuring the abilities of players for, for substitutions and for defensive changes and on and on and on, never end, right? Well, let's start here. This, of course, is a page for Tom Seaver, greatest pitcher that has ever uh, taken the mound. Obviously, we all know that, so there's no reason to discuss it. But here's going to give you his standard pitching. Now, now there's a lot here. I'm not going to be able to cover it all because it'll go on forever. Um, right. and, and what I'm doing here is just want to give you a taste of some of the things that you can do. So let's go over and let's look at Tom Terrific's lifetime stats at the bottom here. It gives you the 20 year summary, a 286 lifetime ERA, you know, uh, interesting. He had one lifetime save. Look at that. Sparky Lyle would be, um, definitely envious, um, his lifetime innings pitched. You know, he was about uh, 20, uh, 2000, 220 away from uh, 5,000 innings pitch, which is pretty amazing. 1,000 fewer hits almost, um, and so on and so forth. So you can see a lot. Uh, he gave up 380 lifetime home runs. The season he gave up the most home runs was 26 in 1978. Uh, with Cincinnati, he, he pitched 260 innings, 36 um, games started, 288 ERA, 16 and 14. When I think when he came, he went over to the Reds. You can see here his six years with the Reds. He really thought that he was going to be in the World Series for probably six consecutive years because these guys, this team was stacked. You know, they had an all-star lineup. Joe Morgan and Pete Rose and Johnny Bench and you know they all these guys were still there when Tom Terrific went over to that team so I can understand him wanting to go to that team because for so many years he was stuck with the lowly Mets who were still contenders you know 73 they were in the World Series uh, with a terrible terrible weak line weak hitting lineup uh, they had decent defense and they had good pitching and that made them competitive but anyway Okay, so uh, so this is one thing you can do here, and you can go over, uh, look, pick a particular season and see how he did and compare it to the next season, see what team he was on that season. Then uh, Towards the end of his career, he jumps from the Mets in 83, then he goes to the White Sox in 84 and 85. In 86, he's traded to uh, from Chicago to Boston. He's 41 years old and so on and so forth. Let's go down. Let's dig a little deeper. I want to know, let's say I want to replay 1973. Uh, let's pick 71 because he had probably had one of his best years of his career, 192 ERA. Uh, he was, uh, let's see here, um, 92 ERA, 192 ERA, blah, blah, blah. What did I just do here? Hold on a second. Ah, okay. I'm sorry. So we're going to pick 1971 and 176 ERA. I don't know what that was. What was that? What? Oh, that's pitching value. That's a whole different thing. I'm sorry. All right. So right up here, uh, 176 ERA, 20 and 10. 
he pitched 286 innings, you know, 210 hits, only walked 61. So I want to replay this season. This was an amazing season. Or you can re replay the 69 season, 25 and 7, 221 ERA. A lot of people say that was his best season because, of course, he led the Mets to the, to the World Series. So anyway, okay, so let's scroll down. And let's see. I want him to – we're going to do an actual replay of his starts for that season, right? So let's see where we can find that. Let's scroll down. And we're going to go to, um, there's a lot of stuff here to look at. Okay, Like I said, we're not going to be able to look at it all. I'm going to give you a few of the things that I use to share them out so you can become a, um obsessive, you know, tabletop baseball gamer like I am. And uh, a lot of you guys have who, who subscribe to my channel have seen the, the um, chaotic nature of, of my uh, headquarters, my MLB tabletop headquarters, which I am the president and commissioner and CEO of. Um, so here we're going to get pitching splits, batting splits, game logs. That's where we're going. Pitching game logs. We're going to replay in 1971. Let's click on 1971. All right, and nothing's happening. Ah, let's see. Here it is. So I scroll down, and... His first game is against Montreal. His second game, let's, we're going to just do a month. His, se his second start is against Cincinnati. His third is against Pittsburgh. His fourth is at Cincinnati. So these three home starts, he was tremendously popular at the time, and he would fill up the stadium at home. So they wanted him to pitch at home as many times as possible, right? Um, the fourth start is at Cincinnati, and the fifth start is at St. Louis. He wins every, I believe he wins every start. He completes three games, actually completes, no, sorry, completes one game, two games, and there's a shutout there, so that's three games. He starts and makes it to the eighth. He starts and makes it to the ninth, and then he gets replaced. Uh, wait a second. That may have gone into extra innings, this one against Chicago. I'm not sure. Game started, nine innings. He doesn't get, oh, he, he did he get the victory? Uh, let's see. No, he does not get the victory now. He doesn't get to no decision, so it probably went into extra innings. This one right here. The Mets win at one nothing, by the way. But he doesn't get his second victory until the third start against the Pittsburgh Pirates. So this is going to tell me what he did, the inning pitch, the hits, walks, strikeouts, and so on and so forth for every start. And um, also it's going to give me the lineups. So if I click on April 6th, um, I should get some more information about that game. Here's going to be the lineups. For the, I want to play actual lineups, and I want to replay him. I want him to face the same guys that he actually faced to see if he can, um, how he'll do given another chance, right? Because that's really my perspective. Mine is a very historical perspective. Um, mine is a very actual perspective I, I feel like i want to get into a, a time machine and travel back in time and be a fan in the stands and watch Seaver pitch right and see how he does how see how he dominates so i'm going to play the actual lineup here it gives you the actual line boots day in center field ron hunt rusty stop bob bailey ron fairley mac jones i know all these guys back then the uh, teams pretty much remained the same year after year after year because the uh, you know, the players were locked down, okay? The system was one of locking down and limiting their uh, freedom to uh, to be paid what they chose to, you know, the, 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 what they felt that they deserved based on their uh, performances, right? They were locked into, um, and, and if they left the, the team that they were on, they wouldn't basically get hired by any other team. So they were kind of stuck dealing with whatever they would get. That's what they got. Right, so now I, but you can scroll down. This is going to give you what they did that day, which is a little bit more confusing, especially if they start making substitutions. It's hard to read. So let's say I want to put my lineup down, make my lineup. Well, it's going to be hard to read, um, especially th in this particular game. There are no substitutions for the Montreal Expo, so really easy, right? Let's see for the Mets, the same thing. So back then, again in '71, you played games. And if they were close games, this is a four to two game. No substitutions were made. Pitchers were allowed to uh, to bat, you know, uh, and um, and so on and so forth. All right. But let's just say I want the actual. Let's say there was a lot of substitutions for 
you know, four or five pitchers on, or let's back then maybe two or three pitchers on each side. And then you had two or three substitutes on each side, maybe a double switch in there. So it's going to be chaotic. So I'd rather just scroll down and look, it says starting lineups. So these were the starting lineups and I'm going to create my score sheet um, from here. That's one way to do it. Of course, there's there's other resources that'll print out the score sheet with these lineups already pre um, inserted for you. So that's another can of worms. And I like that because it saves me time. But I know some of you guys um, don't have printers or don't want to buy ink or don't want to do that or don't just don't want to waste paper and you use notebooks and that's fine. Here's the actual lineup. This is again, just for guys that, that want to replay the actual game to see how a second chance uh, how he would do a second chance. You just want to test out the, the the fun and entertainment value of a particular game mechanic, right? For example, I played the 73 season multiple times with different engines. Twice I did it, just the Seaver replay, twice I did it with Deep Drive Baseball, and it came out really close. I was pretty happy with it. And it's up on my channel somewhere. I have to have to look for it. So that's just one aspect of, of what this resource will do to you right or will do for you let me uh let's see let's go and look at the let's let me find out more about the mets in 71 let me find out how the batters were what pitchers they used um you know who were the outstanding players and who were the the, the dregs right of the mets in 1971 let's look at all that information so let's just click on new york mets All right. Now, there's a couple of things that you're going to do here, which are highly, I find extremely valuable, right? Um, we have the players who played the most games right here. The nine, the eight players that played the most games with their games and their plate appearances and their at-bats, their hits, their batting average, their home runs, and so on and so forth. Now, then in, in, in order, right? were the players who came after those. So when you're looking at a card set from App or Stratomatic or many others, um, they're going to include about the eight players, plus they're going to include probably another five more. So they would include the top, the players that represented the team and who had the most played appearances and so on. Generally, that's how they do it. Not always, because remember, you need two catchers, right? So they have to find the catcher right here. Duffy Dyer would be included. He had almost 200 plate appearances. So one of these probably guys, one of these guys would probably be skipped. Okay. For, um, or maybe not, maybe they would include the six, right? They would include the six. Art Shamsky had 160 at bats. Probably they wouldn't go that far. He would probably be part of extra players or something like that. But Tim Foley, um, played in almost a hundred games. So two thirds of the season. So did Don Clendenin as did Dave Marshall. They used him a lot, probably more as a pinch hitter and an outfield replacement. He was a lefty. Wayne Garrett, see that little asterisk? Tells you he's a lefty. Wayne Garrett played in 50, one third of the season. So basically 100 games is two thirds of the season. 50 some odd games is usually one third of the season. So he was. that tells me pretty much that he was injured that season. Um, didn't play very well. He was either injured or platooned, right? He could have been platooned. Uh, who was the other third baseman? Ah, Aspermonte. Aspermonte played. Yeah, so uh, Garrett played third base and second base, I imagine, um, and was platooned. He batted. Uh, Aspermonte is a righty, so he batted against lefties. And, of course, Wayne Garrett played against righties sometimes. Uh, so that's probably how they did it. So you can see a lot and identify a lot of the trends and patterns of the managing that season. So when you're replaying this game, right, you know that, hey, I want to use Foley. I want to use Don Clendenin. But if you're using actual lineups, that's going to be done for you. But also, if you want to bring in replacements, if you want to uh, pinch hit, you'll know, hey, these are the, the guys I'm using, right, the five main guys, Foley, Clendenin, Marshall, and Garrett to pinch hit. And then, of course, Han in the outfield. He'll get his starts and so on and so forth. Okay, so that's um, – Gives you a good feeling. Now, if you scroll down, it's going to also tell you the pitchers, the main pitchers that you should be using. And it organizes them by innings pitched. 
All right, so that's what basically App and Strat do pretty much. I know App does it for sure, puts them in order of, um, you know, their appearances and their uh, um, at bats or their innings pitched. So Seavers at the top, and then it's Gentry with 200, 165 for Kuzman. He was injured in this season, had a poor, uh, oh no, actually he didn't have a terrible season, but he was injured. He p- pitched about 10, he had 10 fewer starts. That's about two months. So he was out for about two months. Sadeki uh, had 20 starts. He's off the, he, he was at like a spot starter. Nolan Ryan had 26 starts. This is when Nolan Ryan is starting to, um, his ERA was under four, but he, he was just out of very extremely, extremely wild with 116 walks and 152 innings. So who were their closers? Their main closer here with 12 saves was Danny Frazella. Of course, Tug and Burrell was second. Both had excellent ERAs. Down the line is Williams with almost a five. McAndrew over four, almost four and a half. And then Ron Taylor was adequate at a 365 ERA. Of course, down here, you can look at the whip. That's important as well. Um, Even though Charlie, well, Charlie Williams had a terrible whip. Usually the whip goes in line with the ERA, but not always. right. So, uh, for example, Ron Taylor had a pretty good whip at 1.18, almost two and a 365 ERA. They usually kind of align pretty much. Uh, let's see how Seavers whip, uh, 0.9, 0.9. The worst whip was uh, Nolan Ryan at 190, uh, with a 397 ERA. He had a whip of almost six, 1.6, right? So this is where you get all the data on your team and you can learn your team. And finally, this is going to be a 20-minute video. <coughs> Excuse me. The schedule, right? You can look at the schedule so you know who you're going to be playing. So you click on the schedule up here, and it's going to take you to the 71 Mets schedule. So this is not the pitcher or batter log now. It's just the Mets schedule. So they play two games against. So I can already visualize who I'm dealing with and what I'm going to, how I'm going to manage both sides, um, and so on and so forth. I'm using actual lineups, but I could still, uh, during the course of the game, I could, if I know they're playing in a, a really good offensive team in a hitter's ballpark, I may uh, have an early hook on the starter once he gets in trouble. I may, you know, so there's different things that I may do depending. Then they play two games. So it was two games in Montreal, two games versus Cincinnati, all at home. They play the first four games at home. Then they go to Montreal for one game. Uh, this was on Tuesday the 13th. So there's some snow probably, some really, really, uh, inclement weather going on here in Montreal. Um, obviously, right, we're talking about April, the beginning of April, and not Montreal. So, so the Mets had a travel day, and then they go 13th, they play, but then 14th and 15th, it seems that they, they their games were canceled. Then they go to Pittsburgh, which is going to be cold. They play the 16th, the 17th, and then they're going to play a doubleheader on the 18th, which is a Sunday. All right, so they play Pittsburgh four games. Then after that, now they're on the move. These are all at home, by the way. These are all at home, except for Montreal. Uh, New York is cold as well in April. It could be really chilly and snowy and rainy and ugly. Now they're going to go to Cincinnati. They're going to go to Cincinnati for 1-2 and Chicago for 1-2-3. And they're going to go to St. Louis 1-2-3-4 and then Houston 1-2-3. And we're already into May. And this also gives you the score of the game. Did they win? Did they lose? Uh, it tells you the winning pitcher. It tells you the losing pitcher. It tells you the time. It tells you the attendance. So all little um, bits of information that you can use in your replay to just kind of measure and compare how the game actually was to how your replay game was as well. So basically, um, I think I touched the pot. Now, now, there's a lot more to see here, a lot more to see here for sure. Um, Let's see if I can get to it. Uh, it's going to give you the team record and the law wins and losses and splits month by month. It tells you month by month what they did. April 12 and 7, May 16 and 11, June 18 and 11. They had a really rough July, right? Uh, this may have been a month that they lost Kuzman. I'm not totally sure. They had a, a uh, look at this. These are probably the two months that they, let's look at Kuzman's record. 
All right, let's be detectives here for a second. We still got a couple of minutes. I don't want this to go much farther than 20 minutes. Um, so in July and August, they really the Mets began to struggle after really cruising for the whole year and then actually rebounding in September, which they had a winning record. But I bet you Kuzman was out in July and August of that year. So let's let's go up. Let's go back to roster. Uh, let's see roster. Now we don't want. Oh yeah, well we can go to roster. Let's see. Where's Kuzman? Click on Jerry Kuzman and see where it takes us. All right, so let's go to see his game logs for 71 and see if he was out in July and August. So let's wait till this populates. There it is. Let's go scroll down again. We're going to look at his game logs, his pitching, his pitching logs, all the way down. All right, pitching splits, pitching game logs, 71. So I can bet you that he was out in July and August. He didn't have, but I may be wrong. Let's see what happens. So let's scroll down for that. Here it is. Okay. Pitched in April. Pitched in May. Pitched in June. I'm right so far. Look at that. Look what happens. Oh, he's out in July. Only pitches twice in July. And the result with two losses. He pitched well. He gave up one earned run and two earned runs. Oh, but here's where he gets injured. Look at this. Against Montreal. He pitches only one inning, gives up three hits, two earned runs, and he gets pulled. After that, he doesn't come back until August 14th. So he's going to miss uh, three starts in August. And because he's doing six starts per, for like May, he had six starts. So let's say he would have six starts. He missed four starts here. And he missed, so he misses six starts total. Oh, he misses a couple. He only has four in June. That's strange. So he may have an injury that's starting to act up here. Right? He has only four. So he missed two here. He missed four here. That's six. He misses two here. That's eight. So Kuzman misses about eight to, to ten starts. Right? Because uh, Kuzman that season... Let's see if we can get his stats. Uh, so a little part of learning this is navigating, right? Yeah, let's go. Let's go back to the Met to a game so I can click on the Mets logo. And um, and here it is. All right. So let's uh, let's compare. All right, Seaver and Kuzman that season. So Kuzman had 24 starts, and Seaver had 11 more starts. Kuzman had a losing record. I mean, you could say it was affected by his his health. It could also be just that he did not have the support, right? But uh, Again, uh, Seaver was a standout for sure, but the Mets, like I said earlier, um, they um, struggled in in those months of July and August, and I'm just looking for reasons um, why that would happen. And that's about it. That's what I wanted to talk to you guys about, right? Schedule, oh, schedule and results. You can also access it from down here. Schedule and results. Roster, uniforms, batting, pitching, fielding. Look at fielding. See how everybody did, the number of errors they had, and so on and so forth. Um, and here is going, on, again, going month by month and looking at the record. You can compare the record in your replay to the actual record, how they did, how you did. So they had a really poor July. They had a really poor August, and then they rebounded here. They were 83 and 79. Actually, in my replay, uh, they were they won 90 games in my replay. Yeah. So anyway, this is Tony Porter. This is uh, Cards and Dice TV. Remember to like and subscribe my channel if you enjoy my content. 
Um, if you're stopping by and checking it out, please, I'd appreciate a, a like and a subscribe. <coughs> Remember to join Universal Baseball Association Facebook group. Remember to join all its affiliated groups. It's plenty, about six or seven different ones for different game engines. And, uh, and that's it for now. So this is Baseball Reference, how I use it in my um, replays and, and, uh, and my tabletop games. Take care, guys.